uh, in the marriage prep leading up to the wedding, I've asked them to do a Bible study with me on this morning's second reading from Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, I asked the bride and groom to be uh, to, to read Ephesians 5, to, to talk about it together, to, to try to see if they can see themselves in uh, St. Paul's vision of marriage, and then to uh, come back and chat with me. Uh, the next wedding I'm doing, Sam Wagnon's wedding, uh, he and his bride and me are doing this right now. It's always an interesting exercise because every couple reads it and, and comes back with a, a slightly different reaction. They all kind of uh, get something different out of it. Some love it and embrace what they read there in Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, others not so much. There was a couple about 10 years ago, uh, they came in I asked them, what do you think? What do you think about Ephesians 5? And uh, in a very unique moment in my ministry, they said, Father, we really hated that passage. <laughs> it is not every day that somebody tells me they hate a passage from the Bible. I said, okay, let me guess. It was the part about wives submitting to husbands that uh, held you up, and indeed that was the part that they didn't care for. Of course, they're not alone uh, on that. The vision that St. Paul casts in Ephesians chapter 5. It's a, a really, really different vision for holy matrimony than the culture casts for marriage. Very different talking points in the two visions. The vision that St. Paul casts here, it's rich, it contains so much wisdom, and I want to try to just to unpack a couple of the key points uh, for us this morning in the hopes that we'll have some clarity coming out of here and of course in the hope that all married couples will come away renewed and strengthened. Okay, Paul starts his teaching on holy matrimony this way. He writes, Give thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So husbands and wives here, just as on the intro, are given two tasks. Number one, to give thanks always and for everything. And number two, to submit to one another out of reverence for Jesus Christ. Husbands and wives are to live in deep gratitude, lives of thanksgiving, submitting to one another, watching out for one another, helping one another, and doing it all because you revere our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Paul's opening. Oprah Winfrey, who I promise I am tr not trying to pick on, I just think Oprah really speaks for American culture and values in such a concise way. She is really the spokeswoman for 21st century American culture. She's asked one time why she never married her longtime partner, Stedman, and here's what she said, and this is a quote. I realized I didn't actually want a marriage. I didn't want the sacrifices, the compromises, the day-in and day-out commitment required to make a marriage work. And so she speaks for a culture that has a much different view of marriage than the one that St. Paul is advancing for us this morning. He begins, mutual submission out of reverence for Christ. And of course it requires sacrifice, and of course it requires compromises, and of course, it does require day in and day out commitment. And the thing is, Christians see these things as great blessings, where our culture sees these things as great burdens. And that is a big dividing point for us, because sacrifice we think of as a holy thing. Because when we think of sacrifice, we think of the cross. And we think of the greatest act of love that there's ever been. Sacrifice and commitment, those are godly things for us. And Paul tells us, submit to one another. And then Paul continues.
continues. He has a section for husbands and he has a section for wives. And let's look at the husband's role first here. He says a husband is to love his wife as Jesus loves the church. As Jesus loves all of his followers. That's how a husband is supposed to love his wife. Now that sounds pretty easy, right? Like just a really easy task, right? Love as Jesus loved. No, right? This is uh, an incredibly high bar that Paul is putting in front of husbands here. This is no small task, the way that husbands are supposed to love their wives. A husband, in his actions, in his words, in the way that he carries himself both in public and in private, he is to love as Jesus loved, as Jesus continues to love. Jesus gave his life for us, and husbands are called to do nothing less for their wives. They are to give everything, and there should be no limits. And then turning to the wife, Paul says she is to represent the church. So in the sacrament of holy matrimony, St. Paul tells us that wives represent all of us. The church, that is, all Christian faithful throughout the last 2,000 years. And wives in their marriages are to make present the incredible love that Christian people have for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Just think of the lengths that Christian people are willing to go in order to honor their Lord Jesus Christ. Think of the missionaries who leave behind everything and move halfway across the world to proclaim the gospel. Think of, think of the, the monks and the nuns who voluntarily take vows of, of poverty, who literally give up all possessions in the name of following Christ. Think of the martyrs who, who give their lives for their Lord, for their faith. And think of the average lay person who gives so much time and prayer and study and service who freely gives away their hard-earned money, all because they love their Lord. Paul is saying here that wives should love their husbands that much. You see, what we have here is this beautiful, incredible vision of what marriage can be. Mutual submission. The husband gives 100%, the wife gives 100%, and then we have something beautiful, something godly. Now sadly, there are many who would read this passage and take away all kinds of wild ideas from it. There are some people who have what I call the, uh, the go get me a beer interpretation of this passage. <laughs> They read that the wife should respect her husband, and they think it means that, you know, when the husband wants a beer, the wife has to hop up and run and go get him one. Of course, I hope you can see that that's not at all what is going on here. What's going on here is this call to supernatural love. A love that transcends ordinary human love, a higher type of love, a love that manifests something of the love between our Lord and His church. Christian husbands and wives, through the love that they have for each other, are to be walking sacraments. Everywhere they go, they are to manifest the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. When husbands and wives are together, people ought to see something holy because that's what they are. This is the love that Paul is telling us about here. The love that, that Jesus has for us is, of course, this incredible, uh, unconditional, all-forgiving love. And Jesus is saying, or Paul is saying here, uh, that kind of love is best compared on this earth to the marriage of a husband and wife. 
That's what he means when he says this is a profound mystery, and I'm saying it refers to Christ and his church. He's saying the best image we have for Jesus' love for all of us, the closest we get to it here on earth, is the love of a husband and wife. And let me just tell you why, what's behind what he's saying here. Because the critical thing about the love of Jesus Christ is that he never gives up on any of us. Never. And in a marriage, a man and a woman promise never to give up on each other. That's the core of the vows in the Book of Common Prayer. Just think of them, uh, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Christian husbands and wives promise to each other and to God himself that there will be nothing stronger than their love. They promise that everything within their control and everything outside of their control, none of it will be stronger. There will be nothing they say to each other, that will come along, that will cause them to give up on each other. It's a beautiful vision of marriage that St. Paul is talking about here in Ephesians chapter 5, and one that we need to be very, very careful not to lose in the church. I don't need to tell you that there, of course, is lots and lots of confusion all around us when it comes to understanding marriage. And when we define marriage the way that Christians always have defined marriage, one man and one woman in a lifelong loving union, sadly, those are the words of bigotry to many around us. And yet, St. Paul would have us see it as the thing on earth that most reveals the love between Christ and his church. And so, we have to navigate these choppy waters, these choppy cultural waters around us. And the best way for us to do that is for husbands and wives to really lean in to the calling to strive in our marriages for this very high type of love that Paul is calling husbands and wives to this morning. In short, we've got to take the vocation of marriage seriously, even if others do not. Every Sunday when husbands and wives come forward for their anniversary blessing, the prayer that is offered is that their life together would continue to be a reflection of the love between Christ and his church. And so we take away from all of this that marriage is a critical sign to the world of Christ's love for all of us. It's really important to our work of building up the kingdom of God 